Hi, I'm Gary Anderson, ex-Formula One Technical Director for Jordan Grand Prix and Stuart Grand Prix, now Formula One Technical Consultant for Autosport. And I'm here at Lola Wind Tunnel Facility in Huntingdon with Chris Saunders, who's Lola's aerodynamic consultant. Chris, aerodynamics, it's just so important in racing cars, in everything in reality, but there's been so many races like Indianapolis or Formula One races won by less than a tenth of a second. Aerodynamics are what makes that so close. Absolutely, I think um, fundamentally understanding uh, the car that you have is uh, paramount. Uh, it doesn't take a lot um, to, to, to lose a race by a tenth, so um, we spend a lot of time in the wind tunnel developing it such that um, the car has, has stability you know, when it's following other cars because often when you're at a big oval or somewhere like that you'll have a, a you know, you'll literally win on the, the last corner, toe around the corner and pull out and off you go. So we did quite a lot of work on that kind of uh, stability of the car but generally it's low drag. Um, often you've got on big ovals anything between 230, 250 miles an hour. This here is uh, the baseline Formula One car for the 2009 regulations and basically once a, once a programmer or a company has put themselves in a position to have this in the wind tunnel then you can start developing it and keep going. Yeah absolutely, so um, it, uh, you'll start with a, a simplistic model uh, based on the regulations and then you'll take it from there and uh, working with CFD and uh, wind tunnel testing it's an iter iterative um, design solution Bit by bit, you'll, you'll achieve a good cut if you've got the right people. And you talked there about CFD and, and wind tunnel. I mean, the wind tunnel is the last thing you sort of, with the last tick box before you go to the circuit with the component. Uh, CFD comes into that as well. Absolutely. I mean, if the tunnel, if the tunnel is a good one, and uh, you've got good guys working in the tunnel, then uh, you'll get to the point where you, you this, the, the wind tunnel will validate your CFD. And once you've given it the tick, then if it works in the wind tunnel, it'll work at the circuit. And certainly we've never had a car coming out of here that hasn't worked, hasn't been like that. If it says it's good in the tunnel, it'll work at the circuit. And really, in the wind tunnel, obviously, you sort of see nothing. The, the air is, is invisible. You see the wheels rotating and the belt rotating, but CFD gives you that bit more of an understanding of off-body well, airflow. Absolutely. I mean, the uh, first CFD was probably in the early, well, I'd say late, late 80s, I would say, uh, that was of any use. And um, what it d does is it allows you to see the air that's out here. I mean. The wind tunnel, you'll measure all the forces and pressures and things on the car, but what's happening here behind the wheels? And so that's what's allowed development of the race cars as they are now. You can visualise the flow. And it's one of those things that we talk about, this outwash front wing end plate. So this here's a very basic outwash front wing end plate, yeah. and therefore it's sweeping around the yes, car. Yes, I mean, that's a really good example. I mean, OK, that's a very simplified thing, because that was what was in the original CFD design of this particular car. But if you look at it, it's kind of the fundamentals of behind you know, most race cars now, they'll have all these flaps and everything, but it's all about the outwash. I mean, and everything behind here is all about controlling the flow that goes downstream. So uh, the CFD gives you all these design aids and the, um, the wind tunnel measures the forces. And if, if it says it's better in the tunnel, then you build it. So we're now down here with Lola's last Indy car. And I mean, the attention to detail on these things and the machining, solid, solid wastebones machined out. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think the only way to get a good correlation between the um, wind tunnel testing and the track is to have the wind tunnel model as exact as you can. And so a huge amount of attention goes to the detail of the model. But it's not all about racing cars. I mean, trucks, buses, cars, they can all, all uh, improve from better efficiency. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, there's no downside to having better aerodynamics on anything. So certainly, you know, if you, if you look at the sort of truck work we've done through here, all about, it's all about um, reducing the drag of the uh, truck and trailer assembly to, to decrease the um, fuel consumption. And that's obviously an improvement for any haulage yeah, company. Yes, so it applies across the board. There's no, you know, anywhere where you can take drag out of any vehicle will help with your fuel consumption. And you've also got a seven post rig in the next room, which yeah, simulates road movement. Absolutely, I mean, that allows a chassis, so you could do a simulator race circuit. Um, we've had various cars on, on there, and the McLarens and Caterhams, and we've even had a bobsleigh on there for the Olympic team. Uh, downhill um, skiers have, we've had as well and uh, again it's all about tuning the attitude of, of the car or the pilot. And also it's not, it's not just refined to, to wheel, wheel vehicles at all isn't it? Buildings, you could obviously do some of that stuff, stuff in the wind tunnel. Absolutely. Aerospace. Yeah I mean you take the aerospace and we've had drones in the wind tunnel, uh, UAVs, you know, unman, un, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles. Um, all things that just require good aero, good solid aero data, and the wind tunnel's good at delivering on that. 